Hello again. Welcome to our shop. Man, do I have a story for you today. This is one of those... How can I put this nicely? This is one of those things that keeps me awake at night. For weeks. The story on this amplifier is... An old friend customer of mine bought it some time ago. Brought it in to have it worked on. Ran into a bunch of stuff here. It's been one thing after another. This is what I refer to as electronics quicksand. This amplifier has been Mata butchered before he bought it. When it came in, it came in with two 7591 output tubes and a I believe Fisher or Scott output transformer in it and everything I'll show on the other side I've cleaned up a lot at this point frankly I wish that I had started you know recording this when I started working on this amplifier because this has been a zoo this thing is nasty so I work on it from time to time, put it back when I get aggravated with it. But today is the day. I'm done. I'm going honey badger on this thing. I have done a week's worth of work in three days just to clear the rest of the week for this thing. And before I go out the door of this shop, this is going to run. So, anyway, you can see I've put a period correct diagonal transformer back in it. It hummed really badly, so we had to do filter caps first thing. Hang on a second, I'll flip it over and show you the other side. Okay, so any of you that know anything about Marshalls can see right off the bat that somebody's been all over this thing. They've changed all the original caps to Sprague orange drops. Of course, I did bias caps there. Man, anyway, I put a match set of screen resistors in it. I had to repair the original impedance selector because it was all butchered up, and they had actually had hardwired it for 8 ohms. So I straightened that up. And for you guys that's not aware of this, these impedance selectors have a bad name for being uh, unreliable and causing amps to blow. It's a reliable piece of equipment, you just have to maintenance it. You have to make sure that the pins are tight, not loose. And if you lose the cap, don't jam a piece of wire in it as a jumper. They've also cut the chassis here and put a IEC connector in it. They changed the two fuse holders. I'm leaving that stuff. They've had a lot of effects loop stuff in it and all that. It's all gone too. You can see where they've had wire ties back here to run stuff. Yeah, they did that too. Anyway, I'm going to get this thing running today. It has a history of when I get it to where I think I've got it taken care of, it'll blow a set of output tubes for no reason. Sporadically. Repeatedly. <laughs> Believe me, I have worked and worked and worked on this thing. But today, like I say, it's going down. Only one of us are going to walk out this building <laughs> when I'm done. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to move on this and get with it. Like I said, I wish I'd started this at the beginning of uh, 
it's kind of hard to catch you up in the middle but um, this was too good to pass up hopefully I can get it figured out I'm beginning to doubt my ability but then again I'm dealing with a mess here so hang on I'll catch up after a bit well okay first break anyway found a few things after checking out the output transformer again to make sure that it was okay all that was taken care of I moved on so the amp is actually running we've got some hum in the front end we gotta get rid of later we're not there yet if you can hear the hiss it's it's running what I found oh yeah gotta love this Do you know what that is that is one of the pins out of the tube socket out of one of the tube sockets guess which pin it was on pin 5 that's where your signal and your bias is so if you don't know what you're looking at here this is supposed to be a fork looking little deal, it's supposed to be one of these on both sides and your tube pin slides down between it makes a connection so what was happening this tube was actually losing bias intermittently couldn't see it because it's hidden down in the socket but I found it I'm not done digging yet so that's one problem uh, okay so now as it turns out we have the amp running but I can only get about 8 milliamps per tube bias wise so looking into that our bias control is not going down below 51 volts negative. So we have to do some digging there. Time to go spelunking. Okay. Well, I've come out of the cave and dusted myself off here. Anybody that's ever had to work underneath one of these boards without pulling the pots or anything off the front and folding it back knows what I'm talking about. The British certainly have their own way of doing things. Anyway, <clears throat> a bloody hell I guess they didn't expect to have to work on it. Anyway, so we have found our culprit with the bias. As it turns out, it was this 47k resistor in the bias circuit and I'm going to show you what it read. See? 96,000 ohms. Kind of changes things, doesn't it? It's no wonder the bias was uh, so high, negative-wise. Okay. We have the amp running. We have it biased up about 32 milliamps per tube. bias is fixed next problem so now moving on to the hum problem in the front end tight oh yeah I've already found what the problem is this is just for your benefit there same settings that's all I'm saying okay so we have that problem solved <laughs> all right well, I think we have won.
I've actually checked this out, played through a little bit. At first we had some low volume problems, I had to fix that. But man, okay. So, did some lead dressing and changing some leads. I actually ran a piece of shielded cable from here down to our first input stage. Trigger is some noise and oscillations there. Shortened up some other stuff and did a lead dress down here. Rerouted the uh, heater leads a little bit to get rid of some hum. Just try to clean up the wiring here a little bit as much as possible. As it turns out, the original 470K resistor here was open. So that's where my volume problem was. Where the uh, first stage cascaded into the second stage through the low gain input. Cleaned all the pots, rearranged the wiring here. You hear there's a little hiss going on here, but it's not too bad. What else did we find? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to get this thing to work. <laughs> so, but I think I finally made it. Cleaning up someone else's mess is always a hard job. They watch a few YouTube videos, read some forums, think they know enough to work on this stuff and get into it and make a mess for somebody else, then they just pass it off. But anyway, uh, I've cleaned these pots, cleaned these tube sockets, replaced the one noisy preamp tube here in the front, moved these other two Svetlana preamp tubes around to where they were less offensive. Usually you can put a slightly noisier one in the phase inverter if necessary. I did that to save tube usage. He does have a new set of JJ E34Ls. It's been biased to 32 mils a piece. And so we've got our new screen resistors, new filter caps, new power supply resistors, new bias caps, yeah, new power supply resistors up here. We've got half the battle taken care of here. I've got it running. Now, I didn't get time to do the cabinet today. The cabinet is an absolute mess. So I'm going to clean that up glue some Tolex down, got to replace the corners, we'll get into that tomorrow. But uh, I have a few things I have to do this evening, so it's 6 p.m. Actually it's after 6 p.m. I'm going to get out of here and I'll finish this up tomorrow. But the amp is done. And my reward to myself is going to be a medium chocolate frosty. Now that we have the amplifier finished, it's running here behind me. We're going to try to clean up this cabinet a little bit. Of give it a quick wipe down here to get rid of the surface scrunge. But we've got a lot of things to deal with. It's like this panel's knocked loose. The screws are actually stripped out of it on the one side at least. Uh, we've got a lot of Tolex damage. The corners have been ripped off of it. Um, flip it over here. See the back has got a lot of damages here with the Tolex. <coughs> the top has a big piece here that's loose. Lots of little nicks and scrapes. We're not going to fix all of it. I thought about recovering it for him, but yeah, I'm not going to do that either. Um, we've got to get this stuff off here, get these rivets out, get our Tolex glued back down. Let's give it a good scrubbing then at that point, and then get the new corners, uh, the new heat vent on it, new feet. The feet are actually even all broken and busted up. You can see this uh, is pretty much a mess. So, let's get on with it. 
All right. Well, we've scrubbed it all up. We've installed new corners, new heat vent back here. We put all the new corners on it. Still have to put the feet on it. We've given it a really good scrubbing a couple times. We touched up some Telux repairs. And I've bashed in, as looks across the pond would say, some rivets here on the corners. That always takes a bit. It's tedious. So, once I get the feet on this, I'll be ready to stick the ant back in it. We're almost finished. And there we have it. An abused JCM 800, 100 watt, rehabbed and ready to be returned to the wild. It was an ugly one. Again, like I say, we don't get the easy jobs in here. So, just want to give you an idea of uh, how things can go south pretty quick. And how difficult this can actually be. So, until next time, play nice. I'll see you later.